the park's marshes here have always been a part of the community. In the 30s and 40s, salt marshes used to be considered wasteland. And so they would take the dredges as they pump the channels and they would just cover the, uh, the marshes. So all the land around the fort used to be salt marsh, most of it, has all been filled in. That's where the present day U.S. Coast Guard station at Fort Macon's built on. So all that's man made. And so uh, today we realize how important that salt marshes are and we go to the extreme to protect them, the water quality and everything else that they provide. If we go back to like 1869, we can find documentation with Dr. Cowles saying all the young men from Beaufort are coming over here and looking for real eggs in the marsh. Uh, they would gather the eggs, take them over to Beaufort to the farmer's market, and at that time a dozen eggs was worth five cents. So uh, that was uh, very important to the economy, I guess, at the time. And Dr. Cowles always said the eggs tasted very well, so he even ate them himself. If we further go further back in time, uh, Fort Hampton was built here in 1808 to 1809. We find documentation that where the, the government's going out here and gathering all the oysters. And they would cook the oysters to make, get the lime from them to make the mortar for the brick to build the fort. So uh, that was a very big operation here in, in really early 1800s. Some other interesting facts would be the uh, Fort Macon's latrine. Um, they had sinks, what I call a pier over the marsh. And uh, when the soldiers had to go, they'd run 200 yards from the fort out into the, the marsh and sit on the, the little sink and do their thing. At times, there was over a thousand soldiers and everything would pile up under the sink. And twice a day, the tide would come in. Uh, and then on low tide, everything's flushed out. So twice a day, they flushed their commode. And that's how they got rid of human waste around the fort. When you walk along the trails of Fort Macon, you can look, of course, see the fiddler crabs. You can look at the marsh and tell what type of marsh it is by the type of fiddler. Sand fiddlers like sand habitat, mud fiddlers like muddy areas. And when you walk along the edge of the trail, you'll see the larger fiddler crabs called the brackish fiddlers, which likes the fresh and saltwater mixture. So that's kind of interesting. You can see three different habitats in the marsh if you just take your time to notice the fiddler crabs. But here you're going to see a lot of herons and egrets out in the marsh. Uh, we have a lot of great blue herons and snowy egrets and the great egrets. Uh, also a lot of rails. Clapper rails are still using the marsh. Uh, Nutria, which is a South American species. Um, we'll see deer running across and coyotes. So it's a wide variety of animals are using the marsh. And uh, it's just, it's basically breathtaking to sit here and look at it and just take time to notice all the wildlife around you. <laughs>